Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my old shop. I want to talk to you about desk collecting. We got a new system in our new shop, but I want to show you our old shop and kind of compare what we had. So we, I was in here for 30 years. It's approximately 30 by 30. I think it's actually 28 and a half by 28 and a half. But when I, when I started this 30 years ago, I had just graduated from university, a very limited budget. And uh, I remember the first year we didn't have any desk collecting. And the thickness planer would just make an absolute mess that would spend a half, half hour, 45 minutes cleaning up at the end of every day. Plus, the air would be filled with dust. So I wanted something that uh, would handle that, and I wanted it to be able to be pulling from all the machines all the time. So we had a uh, thickness planer here. We had a big 12-inch, joint, 16-inch uh, jointer over there. We had the table saw. We had the band saw. We had a radial arm over there. Uh, edge sander over there. So we had a lot of machines running at the same time. I'm going to take you downstairs. I'm going to actually show you the old system. It's still there. Tell you a little bit about it and where we got the parts. And then we'll go to the new shop and see our new Anita system because it is awesome. See you in a minute. So how do you put together a dust collecting system to handle all of that on very little budget? Well, at the time, this would have been uh, 89, 1990. There were a lot of people in this area who were converting their oil-fired central heating systems to uh, electric baseboard. So the local landfill site had tons of, of ductwork. So all, all, every piece of ductwork in here, including the elbows, I scrounged up there for nothing. Now if you come over here, I uh, can't even remember how I met the guy, but I ended up, there's not a lot of light back here. We have a flashlight? I don't think so. A phone? We, I bought a, um, a blower that came out of a restaurant. And the opening on the blower is 18 inches. So it's a really large impeller. It's got a five horsepower motor. And the strange thing is, there's two pillow blocks on there that have no grease nipples. And in 30 years of running, I've never put a bit of lubrication in there and the thing still runs nice and smooth. So go figure that one. Anyway, so what we did, um, stand back here and see it a little bit better. I read an article written by a local guy who wrote for Fine Woodworking on building your own dust collecting. And I kind of more or less copied it. So I have this great big huge plywood box that all of the, all of the pipes come out of. And the idea is that as the, velo as the uh, area increases, the velocity drops. So as you're pulling material or air is coming through these small pipes, it's coming through quickly and is able to pull that heavy material, gets into this big opening and the velocity drops and it falls to the bottom. So at initially what I would have is two 45 gallon drums in here and the shavings would just fill up the drums and we'd emptied it, but it was forever getting behind them. I actually had a piece of plywood in here with two cutouts in there, but the stuff would go everywhere and you'd end up taking them out and cleaning the whole thing out every, any, everywhere anyway. So I just get rid of the barrels and we would just use this. There's a baffle, there's a baffle right here that goes to within about uh, 12 inches of the top. And the idea was that the air would pass up over that and the heavy material would fall down. But unfortunately, a lot of it got by. So it would get sucked into this big impeller. And then this all had to be built because I couldn't afford to have somebody manufacture it for me. So it was all done out of plywood. And then there was a company in Toronto that I bought these filter bags. I think we have eight of them. And they would hang from the ceiling and uh, they would recycle our air. So in the summer, we'd keep our cool air. In the wintertime, we'd keep our warm air. And then the idea was that the fine dust would fall down to the bottom, and we could take these off and clean it out when we needed. I also had a, a port back there that would go to the outside in the summertime if I wanted to just clean everything out, and it would just blow outside, and we live in a rural area. Actually, the woods are right there. A little bit of sawdust isn't going to hurt anything. So it did a really good job. Uh, I was happy with it, except for the fact that that so much of the material would bypass it, and if you weren't careful, the last three or four bags would be filled right to the top with shavings, just solid, to the, rendering them completely ineffective. Um, what else can I tell you about it? Probably didn't cost me more than a thousand dollars for what I paid for the for the big blower and what I paid for the filter bags and a little bit of plywood. The rest of it, as I said, was all found. Don't really have any use for it. I'll probably take the five horsepower motor out of it, but. Anyway, that's what we lived with for 30 years. Now we're going to take you to the new shop and show you the new Anita system. See you down there. Okay, so welcome to the new shop. I'll show you the system. Um, 
Oneida actually has uh, free service where they'll plan it all out for you. But we were in such a mess trying to get this place up and running. We didn't have time for it. So we got a little bit of advice from the supplier of our duct work. And we just winged it and it works. So uh, I'll show you the, we should actually go look at the heart of the system first. But I will tell you this, this is an old bowling alley. You look down, you can see the, the original lanes. We just filled in where the gutter was. But on the other side of this wall is where the unit is, and the floor is about 10 to 12 inches lower. So I didn't want to have to come off of the machine and then instantly have an elbow, because anytime you put in an elbow, it really slows down the air, and it's the equivalent of how many lineal feet of straight pipe. So I wanted to be able to come off the unit and go straight across the room. So we're using 8-inch coil, and they recommend on this size of a unit, which is a 5 horsepower, that uh, anything above, 8 inches above, use uh, the coil ductwork as opposed to the snap together stuff. Um, it would have been really nice to have automatic blast gates, but they're expensive, and we probably have 15 or more in here. So that little bit of a hassle of having to go over and open and close them, but you know what, the system has the capacity that we don't really need to do a whole lot of that. So we're coming right off of there with an 8 inch, that first uh, T drops it down and uh, runs into a four inch and that feeds the chop saw and a couple of buffers on the other side of that wall and then there's a flexible one over here because these machines aren't permanently situated yet but this flexible hose just serves a desk collector or a disc sander and a spindle sander. So the first big draw and you always want to use Y's because the Y is far more efficient than a T which is what we have over there and this is our uh, 20 inch thickness planer so this would have the maximum um, requirement as far as CFM or however you would measure the, the uh, force of the unit but when that thing is turned on that's you don't get an ounce of dust out of this it's great so we've got a we've got a, a big um, or we've got a blast gate right there we usually keep it shut except when we're using this and then the flexible just makes it so that that can go up and down as you're running stuff through it. Then we go off, off to a table saw, and we still haven't quite figured out how we're going to do this. That's a lot of flexible, and this coil stuff is not nearly as efficient as straight pipe, but because we have a router on the end of the table and we need to be able to have access to that, I haven't quite decided how we're going to use this. Now we come over, we come straight across the room. There's a T here. I know I'd rather have a Y, but we have a T. And that just provides some dust collection for over here at the lathe. We do a lot of work on the lathe. We turn all the handles and all the tools we make. And we also use this for finishing the uh, saw handles. So it's nice to have good, strong dust collection right there. We haven't yet run one to the next lathe, but we will. Our second biggest draw is the 12-inch jointer. And we use the piece of flexible right there just to go from the wall over. We wide off of that. There's your, your um, what's it called? Blast gate. And that's probably not a very efficient way to do it, but we had originally had this, this line coming straight across here, but you're moving big stuff around the table saw, and we were constantly banging into it. So that's why we went to the wall. Now you'll also notice that we used 8-inch pipe to about the midpoint, and then dropped it down, and that increases the velocity. So that's 6-inch for the rest of the way, and then 4-inch feeds most of the uh, individual tools, but they're usually ported for a four inch. So that one drops down for the belt sander. It's really great. We do a lot of work with composites, so it's nice to be able to be able to pull the material away right at the source. So I actually use that one on the drill press a lot, you wouldn't think it. And then the last thing we feed on this line is a dust collector, or pardon me, a disc sander, belt sander combination. We haven't hooked that one up yet. Um, anything else to show in here? What? Oh, the, the uh, band saws? Yeah, we haven't, we haven't serviced the bandsaws yet, and they're a really small port. I mean, that thing's only two inch, so I'm not quite sure how we're going to address that. We'll probably come off right here, and what you do is just cut a hole in it, and then take the, uh, take the joint like that, cut it down the middle, and then just wrap it around, tape it on both ends, and then you don't have to tear this all apart. So that'll service that bandsaw and perhaps the one behind it. All right, I'm going to meet you out in the other room. Actually, we'll, I'll turn it on in here, and you can see, because we bought a baffle that they sell, and it was amazing how, how, uh, quiet it, how it quieted it down. We got several of these. 
So when it's running, it's you're not uh, having to yell to be heard. It's actually a nice, quiet system. Now I'll shut it off. I'm going to turn it on again for us when we're in there, when you're right next to it, and you'll see how quiet it is. So I'll meet you in the other room. So this is uh, NIDA's five-horse high back. This is the largest single phase. We don't have th three-phase power here, so this is the biggest one we could get. Now, uh, when we were first putting it together, I thought, no, nah, this is kind of flimsy. This stuff's not very thick. But actually, when it's all put together, it's plenty sturdy. Well, so what we wanted to do, you can see how tall it is. The motor sits up on top. We wanted to be able to elevate it so that we were shooting straight across. And the easiest way to do it was just to uh, add three-quarter inch plywood to three sides, um, glued and screwed together so it's good and solid. And what that also allowed us to do is have more room for the barrel. So everything dumps into the 45-gallon drum. And it's amazing how little of the particulate actually makes it over here to the filter. But what I'm going to do, if you come around here, Jake, and have a look, is I'm going to get another barrel and then have a section welded onto the bottom just to increase the capacity of this. We have yet to dump empty this, so I guess we haven't been using that enough. Um, this is, I was really surprised. You saw all the filter bags that I had with my old system. And I thought there's no way that you can pull that amount of cubic feet per minute and have it filter back through this. But it does, it's amazing. Now, that black thing right there, we debated over. When this machine was running without that, you could not carry on a conversation in here. It was loud. That's a baffle. What's the cost? 300? I mean, it's a steel container with foam in it. Hardly anything, but what a difference. Now, you would never have been able to hear me prior to this. And this has really quieted it down. We're standing right by the machine, and it's not so loud that you near, need hearing protection. As far as maintenance, uh, there's flexible hose right here underneath the cyclone. And if you're not sure how this works, when the product comes in that pipe, it just starts spinning around and eventually gravity brings it down and drops it into the barrel. And as they say, I think 99% of the particulate ends up in here and does not make it to the filter. So there's a piece of flexible hose right here. You just take that top off the 45 gallon drum and they have a little kit that you can buy that puts wheels underneath this. I bought some, I'll make my own. And you'll just wheel it, uh, lift that up wheel it out and empty it. That's why we had to uh, make sure we had enough room in order to get through here. This hallway was where they would go back and forth to service the lane, the machines in the bowling lane. So instead of moving the wall, we just said, well, we'll leave it here. And we, we do some manufacturing out here. And this pocket in the wall was so that we could put our dust collecting shroud that goes around the chop saw and move the chop saw into the wall instead of sticking out into the room. So we service that with a with the dust collecting right here. We've got these two that collect right here on either side of the buffer. This is what we use to uh, to uh, buff the handles on our composite handles. And then over here, we haven't finished this yet, but uh, we've got more drill presses that we use for the manufacturing process of the handles. So we've got to continue that line over there, and we just have some uh, uh, flexible hose that stays put in whatever position you leave it in, and we'll service several of those. But if you're looking for a dust collecting system, I was thoroughly impressed with Oneida. I didn't think it was terribly expensive. It's made in Oneida, Oneida New York. Uh, really good customer service. And um, didn't take that long to get it. And it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't a very expensive system. But so far, so good. It's been fantastic. you uh, you got to pay attention to the dust problem because uh, if not, it's ruined your day. Anyway, if any questions, leave them below. And I should ask you to... Uh, Share this with anyone that you know might be interested. And please check out our Purple Heart Project. Our shop on the outside is that we're getting ready to build our 1,000 square foot teaching shop where we, four times a year, we'll bring in combat wounded veterans and we teach them traditional hand tool woodworking. It's extremely therapeutic for guys suffering from traumatic brain injury or PTSD. If you know any, please send them to our website, robcosman.com. There's an opportunity for them to go on there. Not only do they automatically get a free membership to our online workshop, but they can also qualify to get chosen as one of the 24 that we bring each year. We cover all expenses, bring them in for a full week, and teach them something that will actually help them be able to manage the uh, issues that they deal with. Thanks for watching.